Hey guys, it's Chris, and we're here again with another build. What are we doing this time? What do you got? Well, I got a couple things. I'm going to open a couple things, and then we're going to go into what I'm building. A couple videos ago, I reached out. I don't know, I didn't reach out. I asked you guys, said, hey, if you got any crap that you don't want, you want me to check it out, or fix it, or whatever, didn't have to be me related, reach out to a brother. Several of you did. Um, first off, I don't know what happened to the envelope for this, but I did Amiga. I, uh, I did a video on the Oki Data uh, Microline 590, and I said how I had to order some ribbons. Well, the ribbons that I ordered, the guy didn't take PayPal on eBay, which is like weird, and wanted direct bank transfer. Nope. Then I got my original ribbon working because apparently I didn't press the select button on the printer. Long story short, that ribbon works fine. One of you, I forget your name, I apologize. Whoever sent me this, thank you. This is a uh, Oki Data 590-591 ribbon. It's still in the plastic. It says it's old, but I have the letter somewhere. But thank you for that. So the next one comes to us from, I apologize in advance, S. Sir, Sir High? We'll go with that. From New York. Thanks. Uh, you email me about this. And check this out. It's a box. I think I know what these are. Yep, exactly. So these are, uh, you know about the SCSI to SD, right? And I'm sure you know about the IDE to SD, the little, little Chinese 44 pins. These, this is the one I run in my Amiga 4000, and it works really good. This is a IDE to SD, and it's, I guess it's just a Chinesium one. Um, there's no master, slave setting. That's just it. It takes a standard SD card. You get the four-pin four pin Berg option or the big Molexi style uh, power adapter. 40 pin, it's keyed so you can't screw up which pin is one. I think it even labels which one's one. Nope, but it's keyed so you, I can screw it up, but it's pretty much foolproof. It does have lights for card activity. This one, like many others, runs in 3.3 and 5 volt, so you're not going to get the old constant light of card activity. That's a big issue sometimes with cards, and you got to put a, a resistor on there and things like that. So I appreciate that. Sir, hi, sir, hi. Thank you so much. I'll follow up an email like we were discussing earlier. And finally, from Frank. Hi, Frank. Not that Frank. Not this Frank. Another Frank. Send me some video toaster discs. I needed some video toaster stuff. And uh, I have the video toaster card that overheats when it's warm. Um, so he said this is a complete set of video toaster discs with a 3.0 upgrade. He said, look, they're old. We don't know if they're going to work. But, you know, that's that's fine. And these 3.1 uh, video toaster upgrades with six discs for the Toaster 2000. So, that was, so Frank, thank you for that. You can get a CD-ROM. You can get an ISO from the internet somewhere. I got it. You could just mount that to get the video toaster stuff. But I always wanted the floppies. And I think I'm, I think it's like 40 discs. So I might be shy a few. But we'll check it out and get everything sorted. So that's mail time for today. A little while ago, I bought, uh, in a previous video, I bought a Biostar. Uh, yep. AMD Athlon XP circa 2001-ish to motherboard. I did a video on how to build an Amithlon system for 20 bucks. So I did it again. I went on eBooger and I got this board. I don't know if it works. I don't even know what kind it is. It just, oh, it's MSI Gateway. 1.3 gigahertz, uh, socket 462. That's an AMD processor from back in the day. 
Several of you have asked, will this work on Intel? Check out my other um, Amithlon videos for the HP and the clone uh, Intel board I did. Yes, the procedure is exactly the same. What I choose to do with the AMDs was just to see how it would work. The compatibility with Intel chips of, of the time from around the 2000 to 2005 era you're going to be in the house with total hardware compatibility. The previous motherboard I did had an integrated video card. This just has an AGP slot. And then I have my old trusty AGP, uh, what was this? I don't know what this one was. NVIDIA GeForce TNT2, something like that. I know this one works. We got the old heat sinks on there for some. So we'll just do that. I got the old table with the cord grounded to the table. We'll be putting on the old ankle bracelet. So we're going to go with this video card. We might use these later on. But for now, I'm going to set them aside. So what it says for a Mithlon is, it is the fastest emulation of a 68040 with a heavily optimized JIT engine. Very high speed. 1070 MHz 68040 according to SysInfo on a 1 GHz AMD Athlon. Which is why I chose the the Athlon processor. Works fine on Intel too. Flexible and easy support for x86. Also native API to get all the power out of your system. It does a Picasso 96 version 3. Uh, has NVIDIA and Matrix Matrox drivers. Hardware acceleration. More Picasso drivers and prep. Now this was in 2002 I got this printout. That was a Mithlon. Except Amiga OS XL versus a Mithlon is Amiga OS XL runs the Qnix Linux underneath. I like just regular all raw Mithlon loading the the cores and everything. So now I've never gotten the Qnix to work properly. I guess because I didn't have the hardware of the period. Now if you're on the old interwebs, which apparently you are because you're watching this on there, um, you can look up a Mithlon and there is a person by the name of Tom his goes by Snake Bitten, S N K Bitten. Runs a great blog. He is the number one resource for a Mithlon. He's got all the links, all the hardware drivers. I've posted many videos on this. He'll probably maybe thumbs up mine. Hope so. And I've been kind of doing my own thing on that. I am nowhere near as advanced in the level that he is. So please just understand that. I have my way of doing things. There's, you know many ways to do the same thing this way is mine I reject your reality and substitute my own screw it up I'm gonna need a power supply and we're gonna do a basic BIOS check to make sure it functions I might even put a new battery in it I went to the dollar store and got some 2032's perfect place to get them because they're a buck for like four of them then we're gonna get an IDE hard drive plop this video card in it I'll link the uh, resource to all the software that I use Tom's site and snake bitten site and any other thing I can uh, think of to help you out in the description below. So follow those links to get what this is. Rockin' solid gear. 600 watt power supply. Overkill. Got the old prison bracelet on. I like to keep it clipped to the metal and the static bag thing is on there too. This is a compact PD650. It's a CD-ROM PD cartridge drive. It's IDE. So that is set to slave. I had a standard double cable that I just broke the thing off of. No problem. For hard drives, I have two. I have a uh, 120 gig Diamond Max Maxter ID and a 300. I'm going to start with the 120. Why? The maximum limit of the file system, SFS or otherwise, is the is 120 gigs. I'm going to be using my ancient compact. Yep, that's pre-HP compact merger. Compact uh, combo server PS2 keyboard and mouse. I'm going to take this and bump the power wire. Let's see if we get anything. I get a beep. Do I get a display? Yes, I do. Hard drive is not spinning up. No power. No video. I have a blinking cursor. No power, Captain. Hard drive spinning up. Must be something with this. Okay. After two hours of running around, 
I found a power supply. Apparently these things are like gold now. Hard drive and CD-ROM. So, we're cooking with bacon. That is step one. Make sure you have, you don't really need a floppy drive. If you want floppy disk access in a Mithlon, you can. I usually just boot off of CD. So, step one, which took me four hours. Make sure you have proper uh, power. A hard drive of your choice up to whatever gigabytes. It's only going to see 120 gig. A CD or DVD drive. And a video card. In the description linked below, I'm going to link FreeDOS. FreeDOS is a MS-DOS clone with a bunch of utilities and tools in it. It's just an ISO. You burn it. You boot from it. So I'm going to insert this disk, reboot this sucker, control alt delete. This keyboard's so old it doesn't have a Windows key. Just control alt space bar. FreeDOS is in. We're going to boot from FreeDOS. Press enter. And then we're going to choose FreeDOS live CD only. Bottom choice. It's going to do some magic. Note your drive letter X for your CD-ROM. So, with this, we're going to type XF disk. It's not F disk, it's XF disk. Press OK. You're going to see I have a hard drive right here, Active Primary. I'm going to press Enter on that. I'm going to delete the partition because I had junk on there. Yours will now say Free. I'm going to press Enter on my free partition, and I'm going to say New Partition Primary. You're going to be prompted to put all your space in. You don't need it. What we're doing is we're creating a boot partition that the Linuxy loader will go on to launch a Mithalon. We're going to also carve out two hard drive partitions, or one, that are going to be our Amiga virtual disks. So we're going to make this something like, uh, whoops, 30 megs. Start a free space and say yes and no. So I got 32 megs, that's fine. On the free space again underneath, we're going to press enter. We're going to say new partition, primary. 131 gigs. You can if you want. Don't be thrown off by my weird one. I'm going to make this 3,000 megabytes. Start a free space. No. Now you're going to see this says 3,000 megs. It's hidden. We're going to press enter again. We're going to change the partition type. We're going to say custom or other. We're going to type Amiga 76. That's the partition type for Amiga. You want to initialize the partition area? No. You can do the same thing for your other one. New partition, primary. Give it all the onions. No. Enter again. Change partition type from other to 76. And no, we don't want to initialize anything. So in the end, on me, yours will vary. I have a 31 meg FAT16 slash 32 megabytes. A 3 gigabyte hard drive, which will be system. And an inactive uh, 128 gig, which will be whatever I throw on it. Now, SFS, fat, uh, fast file system, PFS3, whatever, they're only going to have a maximum space of like 112, 128, something like that. So you're done here, or F3 is quit. It's right here. F3 to quit, and we're going to say yes. We want our right, and restart your computer. You're going to leave your FreeDOS CD in, and you're going to do the same thing booting from FreeDOS. All right, so you're in. Now what you're going to do is you're going to do format C, slash S. S means system or make it bootable. Yes, it's only 32 megs. Oops. You have to type the word. Yeah. Oops. Jeez a whiz. Y E S. Enter. Now, on the CD, which was drive letter X, we can do a directory. There it is. So we're going to go into the uh, free DOS directory. And then you can do a directory again if you want. And we're going to do a setup. Directory again. And you're looking for Odin. C D O D I N. And here is your DOS, right? This is regular, just like MS DOS, but it's free DOS's DOS. We're just going to do copy star dot star to C. If you wanted to, you could make a directory on C called DOS and copy everything there, but you're never going to be in there, so I just do this. You're going to skip your command com. No, and you're going to skip your 
whatever the other one is, kernel.sys, no. So from that aspect, you're done. But you don't want to remove your CD yet. Why? What I'm going to do is I'm going to change directory to C and do a directory. Just make sure my stuff copied. Great. While leaving FreeDOS running with drive letter X available for you in DOS, we're going to eject your FreeDOS CD. Ta -da. You're going to put in a kernel CD. Now, this is just the disk I made with the other kernels that are available, which are all linked in the description below. You can run the stock Amithlon kernel, but for some advanced features like PCI cards or video cards or some other goodies, you're going to want the other kernels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to X again. Now I'm going to wait a second for my disk to acknowledge and spin up. If you do it too quick, sometimes you've got to do it a couple times. Alright, so we're going to go to CD backslash directory, whoops, D-I-R. You see I have kernel 310 and kernel 4, so I'm going to copy, star dot star to C. Two files, and go back to the C drive. Switch disks again. I have a bunch of CDs here because I kept burning them over and over and over and over. I made disks with Amiga programs from my computer. Uh, so here's Amiga OS 3.9 XL, ISO, link in the description below. Go ahead and insert that. Give it a second to spin up. DIR. You're going to go to the ISO Linux directory. There you go. You only need a, uh, a few files out of here. You're going to need the GZs, which is bigird.gz, mubox.gz, smallird.gz, two text files, a mythalon and small, and an executable loadlin.exe. You could copy everything, but you don't need it. So I do copy star.gz to C. Then we're going to do copy small to C. Copy a mythlon to C and copy loadlin.exe to C. Now, I'm going to leave my 3.9 CD in and reboot the machine. It will boot from this CD. You can do this prior to doing all the DOS stuff if you would like. Now, I'm loading the OS from CD. I have not booted off the hard drive yet. You're going to notice this looks very 3.9-ish because it is. We're going to go into a HD. We're going to run Tools and then HD Toolbox. You're going to see various devices called a device, cd-rom.device, floppy.device, and a second a device. The a devices are your IDE ports. So we're going to choose the first one, or the second one in my case, a device, and say OK. You're going to notice I have 127 gig Maxter. Whoops. I have a Virk disk 2.9 gig, and I have 125 gig second partition. The important part of this operation is never choose disk address zero. You can. You can install the whole OS until you reboot and blow away that DOS partition we just made. The top one's going to be your hard drive. So we want to partition the vert disk one. You want to install this drive. Yes I do. Vert disk one. Fine. 2.9 gigs. We're just going to say install and OK. We're going to do the same thing for the 125 gig secondary partition. Great. Now you can highlight that 2.9 gig and you can even go into partition drive and highlight and delete the partitions. Take this one, drag her on over. Great. Give it a name of DH0 or VDH0. You can leave it how it is and hit save. Right here. Make sure it's not checked. Now your buffers here, depending on how much RAM you have, you can adjust those up. For this exercise, I'm just going to leave everything default. Save and OK. And then we're going to choose Exit and Reboot, leaving the disk in the drive. It's a fast reboot. It's not a physical reboot. It's a virtual reboot. Now, take off a backdrop. In a few seconds, you're going to have your hard drives appear. DH0, and you're going to do a normal format, except it's a quick format. So we're going to choose and we're going to call this one system. Your naming convention can be your own. 
No trash can like Jesus would choose. Fast file system and international mode and choose quick format and then format and then format again. Pow! We're going to repeat this process for DH1. Wow! There's my system. There's my work. Pretty cool, huh? I don't know why that one didn't do a right uh, hard drive size. We'll fix that in a bit and I'll show you how. Go into your Amiga OS X LCD in the OS version 3.9 and run your installer. Choose use RAM disk. It's a little faster when it finally does its thing. It only takes a second to install this. Well, not a second, but bam, we're done. Okay, so we're gonna say proceed. Now, before we reboot, go back into a Mithlon HD. Tools, HD Toolbox, choose a Mithlon.device, choose your first hard drive here, and say partition drive, and check off bootable. Check it off, hit save, and then exit. Now, we're going to eject this 3.9 CD. Boop! We're going to reboot the Amithlon machine, either with print screen R or control Windows Windows. My keyboard does not have that, so I'm using print screen R. Now, if I get my backdrop, I am booted off of my own hard drive. I'm going to reboot the physical computer by pressing the reset button with my knife here. And I'm going to go back into DOS mode. Now that we know we boot, we're going to set it to boot the kernel we want, kernel 3 in my case, or kernel 4, and have it do it in auto exec bat. So all we've accomplished is we've installed our virtual hard drives, we have installed the operating system, and we have made the virtual DH0 bootable. Now, I'm going to edit small. I have it set for kernel 4. We're going to do kernel 310. Oh. F save, Alt F X. We're going to edit auto exec.bat and we're going to add at the very bottom here load lin at small. Alt F save, Alt F X. Now, if I'm to reboot the machine or turn it on or whatever we want, we're going to have a auto booting Amiga OS 3.9 XL. And we should get our boing ball and then our operating system screen because our hard drive is bootable. If you get a weird, distorted, looking like a disk ROM image, that means that you forgot to check off bootable. You can load uh, load lin at a Mithlon again, and run HD Toolbox and check it off. Or boot off your CD and check off bootable, you'll be good to go. So now we have a system, but it looks like Dookie. I have a hardware accelerated card. Why isn't it working? Boop! Enter disk number whatever. I have a disk called OS 3.9 Patches. It has like the service packs and the drivers and things. Once again, all linked below. You can make your own disk. I made many because I just kept doing it. Adding things. Needed this, needed that. I could put it on one DVD and be done with it. But you know. So here we go. Here is my disk. Where's my stuff? Show all files. Here we go. So there are a bunch of zip files. Well, it comes with a unarc utility right down here. So I'm going to take unarc and I'm going to choose my CD here, my disk, and I need the Amithalon update. 131. Okay. We're going to dump this to RAM. Okay. And start. We're going to repeat that process for a couple of the other ones too. We got a Boeing bag 3.9, now the XL update 1, so we're going to choose this one. XL update 1, I believe is on there, not sure, start that one too. And then we're going to do what, Boeing bag 2, start that one. They really unpack pretty quick. And what else do we need? Uh, a rack attack is USB. I'm not going to do that till my Poseidons are on there. But I'm not ready for that just yet. Drivers are 90. I forget. This should get me going. So that's good. So I'm done on archiving with my CD. And I'm going to go to RAM disk. And I'm going to first put on the update one. Proceed. Okay. Happy New Year. Great. Boing bag 2. You can install the ROM update for this. Check in the CD-ROM. You're done. Finally, Mithlon update. Proceed. 
Now, I don't have a sound card in here. If you did, boom, pop a sound blaster in that bad boy. Now what? Reboot. I should have a better color workbench. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into System, Prefs, Screen Mode. Now we have better colors. So I'm going to do what? Let's do something nice, something real nice, Clark. How about 1024 by 768, 16.7 million colors. Just do it. Bam. Crystal clear, a Mithlon system that is now yours to do the taking with. Cool. A full fast reboot is this. Rebooting. It'll flick out. And then, boom, you're up. Not bad at all. I can take out this disc, finally. And I have a working system. You're like, oh, that's great. You forgot about that hard drive. You're right. So now on my own hard drive, System Tools HD Toolbox, a Mithalon dot device, excuse me, choose that secondary partition. Drives have been added or removed. Update that bad boy. We're going to install this drive and say, yep. New RDB. It's now correct size. Whoops, you can't see that. 125 gigs. Let's see. Install. You want to? Sure do. Partition that drive. Holy crap. Look at all these partitions. Let's get rid of this. Drag it on over. Give it the onions. 125 gigs. So now I'm going to format this drive. We're in a quick format, remember. 125 gigs. Awesome. So we're going to say DH1. And whoops, no trash can. A quick format like Jesus would, and okay. Do it! Ta da! DH1 with 125 gigabytes free. That is a hell of a lot of space for an Amiga. You have to put MUI on first because it's required for pretty much anything. MUI. Double click on it, stick it in RAM. Now we're going to install MUI. Okay, MUI is done. Alright, so now we're going to install Poseidon. Alright, Poseidon's installed. A rack attack. Now here is where you want to choose a Mithlon USB version. And Poseidon will search for USB controller hardware. Now, this motherboard has one USB controller. I hope it's supported. Proceed. Proceed. Hey! Cool. So now I got USB. Yeah! USB thumb drive was detected. Yay! Look at that. Amiga stuff. Do, 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 do. Now remember, this is USB 1.1. It is not fast. I wonder if I could run it from USB while I'm copying. Let's find out. Let's just run it. If it crashes, how old it? Uh, we gotta do a resolution that this thing can see. Built in, uh, 640 by 408 bit. This is running off of USB. No sound, by the way. USB 1.1 loading while I'm copying stuff and trying to load an 8 meg head demo. This is running off of a USB drive while it's copying. It's running substantially well. Pimega 2.0 did this in 4 seconds at 180 frames per second, but this is pretty daggone good. Remember, this is circa 2000 technology. Demo ran in. Can't read it. <laughs> That's cool though, you know. Using Devolution X with the shareware one right off the old Aminet. Takes about 10 seconds normally, and there's Diablo. High color, you can play the whole game. I'm running off a USB stick on this. Isn't that cool? Can you do this? Yes, you freaking can do this. Should you do this? Do you have old junk hardware lying around that's doing nothing, and you feel like uh, just doing something on the weekend? Give it a go. See what you got. Watch this video. Pause it. Look at my parts step by step. Um, you know, follow along at your own pace. 
It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to have everything working 100% all the time. But it's nice to know that you can use this stuff and turn it into a kick butt Amiga. Um, I'll continue on this. Gonna put it in another case. I'm running out of room on the other side. I got so many cases. We'll get it sorted. We got games working. We have all of our stuff working. It's really cool. That's all I got for now on this Amithlon version. I hope you were able to at least get some clarity on the steps involved, how I do it. Reach out to Snake Pitten. He loves the attention. He's got a Facebook group for Amithlon. Doesn't get much action. Let's get that sucker pumped up. If we could get people to make drivers for modern hardware, you could run this on your computer. Like your com your moderner com moderner more modern computer than a 2001 20 year old turd. I've ran it on stuff that's been around like 2014 2015 Core 2 Duo Core 2 Quad. It doesn't use all the cores, but it works. So it's something to check into. I just did the AMD uh, processors from uh, back in the day because I wanted a Mithlon to run on the hardware it was around built for. It runs on Intel. Pentium 2, Pentium 3, Pentium 4, Pentium 1s. It'll run on any Intel box. It'll run on AMDs. So that is all I got for now. Thank you for watching. As always, hope you learned something.